On March 22, 2020, in an apartment building near the hospital, a resident on the second floor found that her drain was clogged. She called someone to unclog the pipes, and soon the plumber pulled a large amount of ground meat out of the pipes. As they were all confused, they noticed a human finger in the meat. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. If you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to my channel. Let's dive into this story. This incident took place in Yulin City, Guangxi Province. Yulin is known to many for its local traditional custom called the Dog Meat Festival. Li Fengping, a nurse at the Yulin First People's Hospital, will call her Ping. Born in 1995 in a rural area of Guangxi Province, she is the eldest of four children in her family. When Ping was young, her mother fell ill and needed medication for years, making it impossible for her to work. Her father worked in the city to earn money to support the family. The entire family lived in a small dilapidated house with very basic furniture. Ping was mature from an early age and helped her parents take care of her younger siblings. To start working and making money sooner, and to improve her mother's health, Ping decided not to go to college and instead chose to study nursing at a vocational school with a shorter program. In 2017, after graduating, Ping got a job at the Yulin First People's Hospital through campus recruitment. New nurses at the hospital must train in all departments for about three years before getting a permanent position. During this training, the salary is about 3,000 RMB, approximately $450. Once she becomes a formal nurse, her salary is expected to increase to about 8,000 RMB, approximately $1,200. Ping rented a small rundown house near the hospital for about $50. Her busy work schedule at the hospital made it difficult for her to visit her parents, except during the new year. One day in June 2018, while working the night shift at the hospital, Ping was chatting with a colleague who recommended a mobile game called Lucky Airship, which is essentially an online lottery. Ping immediately downloaded the game, and after installing it, she found that it didn't require an ID or phone number to register. You could place bets right away, and the gameplay was simple, just guess the numbers. If you guessed correctly, you won. If not, you lost. When placing bets, you could choose the multiplier, and there was no upper limit. The rules were very simple. There were 10 sets of numbers, each set producing a number between 1 and 10. As long as you picked all the even numbers, or all the odd numbers, you would always get some of them right. In the beginning, everyone would definitely win a few rounds, but that didn't mean they would make any money. The odds of winning increased as you played. The colleague who suggested the game to Ping played with small amounts, sometimes winning only 1 or 2 RMB. One time, however, she lost 100 RMB in a single round, about $15, so she uninstalled the game. But Ping became addicted and couldn't stop playing. After spending her own salary, she started borrowing money from her colleagues using the excuse that her mother needed cancer treatment and she needed money for exams. She promised to pay them back, and sometimes she did. In July 2019, the Bank of China offered the medical staff at Yulin Hospital a loan of 300,000 RMB, about $44,000. Ping asked her colleagues to help her apply for the loan, but the older nurses refused. However, two younger nurses agreed to help her and didn't pressure her to repay the loan afterward. Knowing that her family was struggling financially, Ping never asked her parents for money. When her gambling losses became substantial, she turned to online lenders for funds. In just six months, she had records of transactions with 10 online lending platforms, most of which charge interest rates well above the legal 36% annual percentage rate. For Ping, Money became just numbers when it came to gambling. The more she gambled, the more out of control she became. Sometimes she would spend tens of thousands of dollars in a single day, losing as much as $10,000 at a time. But there were also times when she would win some of the money back, 
with the most she ever won being $15,000 in a single day. In just one year, Ping spent more than 2.9 million RMB, or about $430,000 on this gambling platform. In the world of mobile gambling, she was betting thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars every day. In real life, however, she was still living in a small house that cost only $50 a month. She even hesitated for a long time before deciding to buy herself a refrigerator and finally spent $50 to buy one on Taobao. In October 2019, unable to borrow any more money and frequently harassed by debt collectors, Ping turned to Dr. Luo Peng, the deputy director of the orthopedic spine department where she worked. Dr. Luo, 51 years old, had a daughter in high school and drove a BMW SUV to work. People in the hospital often said that Dr. Luo was wealthy. Ping sent a message to Dr. Luo on WeChat asking if he could lend her $30,000. Dr. Luo agreed, but on the condition that Ping would have to listen to him. One day, Dr. Luo arranged to meet Ping at a high-end hotel two kilometers away from the hospital. When Ping entered the hotel room, she saw Dr. Luo undressed and lying naked on the bed. Feeling disgusted, she tried to leave. But Dr. Luo wouldn't let her go and forced her to sleep with him. The next day, she received $7,500 from Dr. Luo. She then wrote an IOU to him. After that, although she felt very resistant inside, Ping still went to the hotel to see Dr. Luo several times. It wasn't until early March 2020 that she finally received the full $30,000. Dr. Luo continued to demand that Ping meet with him regularly and verbally threatened her several times saying that if she didn't comply, he would expose her situation and cause her to lose her job at the hospital. He also claimed to have connections with the police and prosecutors and warned that no one would help her. He even threatened to harm her sister if she turned him in. Ping had worked hard to move from a poor rural area to the city, and her job as a nurse meant everything to her. She was also afraid of Dr. Luo's possible retaliation against her family. Feeling depressed and helpless, she even contemplated suicide. Starting in January 2020, she swallowed more than 80 sleeping pills in one month. The second time, she turned on the gas in her room and slept through the night, but it didn't work. The third time, she took two bottles of insulin from the hospital and injected herself with 800 units. Despite three attempts, Ping couldn't end her life. In March 2020, Dr. Luo couldn't get a hotel room because of the COVID-19 policy. He asked Ping to rent a house near the hospital and he would pay for it. So Ping rented a very old and shabby house. On the night of March 20th, a drunken Dr. Luo arrived at the house, immediately took off his clothes and repeatedly demanded that Ping sleep with him. Ping was playing a mobile game and didn't want to deal with Dr. Luo. So Dr. Luo began to insult and threaten her again. After that, Dr. Luo fell into a deep sleep. Listening to Dr. Luo snoring, Ping, who was sitting on the bed, felt extremely disgusted and humiliated. The more she thought about it, the angrier she became. Then she searched on Baidu, a Chinese search engine similar to Google, for, what do you do when you hate someone a lot? She found an answer that said, make him disappear. Then Ping searched for how to use weakness to overcome strength. In the end, she decided to use a data cable. At 1 a.m. on the 21st, Ping grabbed a 1.5 meter long data cable within reach, wrapped it around Dr. Luo Peng's neck, and pulled tightly. Dr. Luo suddenly woke up and struggled. They both rolled under the bed, with Ping still holding onto the cable. A few minutes later, Dr. Luo became unresponsive and Ping checked his carotid artery and found no pulse. Subconsciously, Ping attempted CPR, but there was no response, so she was certain that Dr. Luo was indeed dead. After that, she used Dr. Luo's fingerprint to unlock his phone and transferred 98,000 RMB, about $14,000, from Dr. Luo's Alipay account to her own debit card. However, this amount was instantly deducted by the online lending platform, 
leaving only $135. She continued to try to use Dr. Luo's ID and bank card to apply for online loans but was ultimately unsuccessful. At 8 a.m., Ping dressed neatly, went to the hospital on time, and returned to the rented house after work at 6 p.m. From 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. the next day, she spent a full 20 hours cutting Dr. Luo into 2,668 pieces. She thought she needed to get rid of the body as quickly as possible so that bacteria wouldn't grow. During this time, she also returned to her rented house to get her clothes, threw away her blood-stained shoes, and went to Dr. Luo's car to look for the IOU note she had written, but it was not found. She also made sure to text Dr. Luo's wife, pretending to be him and saying he was out of town for surgery. When Dr. Luo's wife called, Ping hung up and texted back, saying he was out drinking and couldn't talk. On the night of the 22nd, Dr. Luo's wife thought this was odd and called the hospital to check, only to find that Dr. Luo hadn't been to work for two days and hadn't had any surgery. She immediately called the police. On the afternoon of the 22nd, after 20 busy hours, Ping went to the hospital for her night shift. Her downstairs neighbor noticed a clogged drain and called a plumber. When the police arrived, they found more human flesh in the drain. Suspecting the third floor apartment, they broke in and discovered a pot and black plastic bags of boiled meat. The police quickly identified Ping as the prime suspect. That same evening, as Ping was returning home from work, the police arrested her. The police could not believe that the innocent and fragile Ping could commit such a heinous crime as killing, dismembering, and cooking a human being. After being taken into custody, Ping quickly admitted to killing Dr. Luo. However, she claimed it was in self-defense because Dr. Luo had raped and threatened her. She had attempted suicide several times just to get away from Dr. Luo. After investigation, the police found evidence of her suicide attempts but it was difficult to find evidence of the rape. On October 30th, 2020, the Guangxi Provincial Court found Ping guilty of premeditated murder and theft and sentenced her to death at first trial. Ping appealed the verdict. On December 22, 2020, during the second trial, Ping calmly described the events, repeatedly using the word shame to express her feelings. She stated that Dr. Luo demanded her immediate attention and wanted her as a lover and to bear his child while forbidding her to have a boyfriend. Ping said, quote, How could I like him? I found him repulsive with his fat, middle-aged appearance. He wasn't even worthy to be my father. Unquote. The central point of contention between the prosecution and defense was whether Ping had been threatened and raped. The money Dr. Luo gave Ping was not a gift. A promissory note was found in his office drawer indicating that Ping had borrowed the money and owed high interest. The court concluded that Ping went to the hotel voluntarily and willingly let Dr. Luo into her room on the night of the incident, so the rape claim was not valid. On August 20, 2021, the Guangxi court upheld the death penalty in the second trial. Ping's father, in an interview with the press after the incident, expressed his belief that Ping had committed a crime but that the man involved was also at fault and that the court sentence against Ping was too harsh. He described Ping as the pride of the family and a role model for her younger siblings, noting her caring nature and excellent academic performance from an early age. He had hoped that she would settle down in a stable job at a hospital and eventually marry someone from the city and move away from the impoverished rural life. He couldn't understand how his frugal daughter had accumulated nearly half a million dollars in debt. Ping, with her hair tied back in a ponytail, looking like the girl next door, got caught up in online gambling and couldn't get out. Refusing to accept a life of poverty in the real world, she tried to change her fate through a trap-like gambling game, losing a lot of money and even unwilling to stop, even at the cost of her own body, to a man twice her age made her disgusting. In 2016, the Chinese government began to regulate the online lottery industry. As many illegal platforms and the ease of buying lotteries online made it easy for people, including minors, 
to become addicted. Now, online lotteries have been completely banned. What are your thoughts on this case? Please leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like it and subscribe to my channel.